Good morning, church. It is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are uh, going to have mighty sounds rushing through this space. Hopefully those will come through your device as you watch and listen this morning. We will have our own divided tongues of flame here. Uh, We will not be, as they were in Acts chapter 2, together in one place. But the power of the Holy Spirit is such that we are bound wherever we are. The Holy Spirit can find you wherever you are. And so wherever you are this morning, let us worship together. Yes, the Lord's name is majestic. Great song. Great opening song this morning. Good morning, church. If you have your worship materials available to you, either on a screen or printed out, I encourage you to join with me in our call to worship. If you do not have those available to you, don't worry about that. Meditate with us during this call to worship. God, the Holy Spirit... You are the restless breath of love that sweeps through the world. You You move move where you will, will, breaking breaking down down barriers, stirring stirring hearts to change, change, making making all things things possible. possible. Come, Spirit of God, and sweep through our world, carving out new rivers of hope in your image. Inspire each one of us to hunger and thirst for justice, that that all all might share in the rich blessings blessings of of your creation. And for us, we pray that you will bring transformation in our praying and living so that that we we may may act justly, love mercy, and and walk walk humbly humbly with you all the days days of our lives. Let's join together in heart and spirit as we sing our opening hymn of worship, number 586, Open My Eyes That I May See. Open. 
open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love for thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Let's pray together. God of all glory and God of all grace, you are truly God of all. And we thank you. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for the reality of living in your promise, of knowing that where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. And so, Lord, we, we welcome you today and we celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished on each one of us. Open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. And Father, open our spirits so that we may know your leading and your guidance. Open our hearts that we might receive your wonderful love. We ask today that as we worship, that you will strengthen us, that you will restore us, and that you will inspire us. Lord, fill us with your peace so that as we journey onward we will pour out your love and your grace to others. May our souls catch the wind of your spirit and take your promises to the ends of the earth. We ask this all in the glorious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 1, the first five verses. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, 
and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Friends, before we go out to uh, Pastor Amy for our pastoral prayer, we have several additional requests uh, that have been lifted up over the past day or two. First of all, a a prayer of celebration and joy. Uh, Carol Farrell got to go out. They had a a drive-through blessing time, a parade out there at the facility where Dave lives. And so Carol got to drive by and see her beloved uh, for the first time in a long time. And what a blessing that was. Uh, We celebrate that. And we continue, Carol, Dave, to love you very much. Prayers for Community Christian Church in Kansas City, which uh, we understand sustained some, some weather-related damage yesterday. Uh, we know that, uh, that our God is a builder and that even now God is working in the hearts of the people of that congregation as they move toward rebuilding together. Uh, Prayers of concern. This week, uh, Kathy Murray's daughter, Robin, who is one of our most precious members here at First Christian Church, uh, Robin had some major health issues and was hospitalized, and she is doing better. She's doing okay. She is still there. Uh, They're still kind of keeping an eye on things, uh, but our prayer is is bearing fruit there, and uh, Robin is is beginning her recovery and, and doing well. Uh, also recovering or, or at least, you know, a significant way through the journey of coronavirus is uh, Jack and Susie Bentham's son in Las Vegas. Uh, we learned this week that he had contracted the coronavirus. Uh, he is at home. He's doing reasonably well, uh, but uh, we certainly pray for God's special presence with him. He also has five children, and so the family is very concerned about that situation, and, and, uh, and, and we, are, we are certainly with Uh, the Bentham family, as we know the spirit of our God is. And then there are five men in this congregation that are all struggling with health issues this week. Uh, Lynn Cox was hospitalized. He is now home and is doing better, but continued prayers for Lynn. Uh, Prayers for Burton Knapp, who is having surgery tomorrow in Fort Worth. Uh, Prayers for Ted Scrimger and for Ray Mount, who are facing health challenges. And then prayers, special prayers for Don Hicks, uh, who, we, who we learned this week contracted uh, cancer. And, uh, and so, Don, our prayers are with you in a special way. Uh, we love you very much, and we pray the special presence of God with you and over you during this challenging time. Pastor Amy. Good morning, church. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have a few new prayer concerns to share with you. Those can be found at our website, fccgranberry.org. And if you just scroll down to where it says prayer list and click on that box, you can be updated regularly. And those that are printed in bold are our new concerns. So I will share those with you now. Arlene Atwell, who is Ellen Buck's aunt, Alan Newton, Krista Seville, who is a friend of Lynn Cox. Joanne Spruill, who is Betty Wheeler's sister. And Kathy Murray and her daughter, Robin. Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of God, we long to be open to your presence in our church and in our lives and in our world. Fill us with your wind and fire, your holy breath, that we might be enlivened again. Help us to hear your promise of hope today as if for the first time. Give us visions and dreams of what you long for in your creation, that we might begin to embody them and live them into reality. Pour out your spirit on us today Make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to all the world, bearing the fruit of your spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control until that day when your dream for humanity is realized and we are at home with you. We ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Happy Pentecost. Blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. Wind, wind on the sea. Nothing worth more that'll ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Our glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Nothing worth more that'll ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy 
Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us become and experience your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome. By your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Deshay. Well, friends, a uh, special prayer this morning for our Minister of Technology. Heath Ramsey back there as we uh, talk a great deal today about the power of Pentecost. It is a uh, sound person's worst nightmare. Uh, thank you, Heath, for all that you do, and God bless you. <laughs> well, friends, the ancient Hebrew people celebrated the Feast of Shavuot in dual commemoration of the giving of the law to Moses at Mount Sinai and also the annual wheat harvest in Israel. Shavuot happened on the 50th day after Pentecost, or as they would have said it in Greek in the first century, the Pentecostos day after Passover. And so roughly seven weeks after the events of the crucifixion and resurrection, uh, 10 days after Jesus' ascension, the first disciples had gathered together in one place for the Shavuot feast. When? Acts chapter 2. Verse 2, suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say... Thanks be to God. I was standing in our backyard last week, I think seven or eight days ago, right at the front of one of those late spring Texas storm cells, and I heard a sound that I hadn't heard since I was about 10 years old, and a tornado flew right over our house. It, uh, I, I don't know what it was, but it sounded like this. Ooh. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. I started scanning the horizon for tornadoes. I did not see one. So far as I know, we didn't have any that day. But it was both awesome and terrifying. Probably not unlike that sound, like the, the rush of a violent wind that swept through that room on that first Pentecost. And I had been thinking about this text 
in anticipation of today, and so I quickly scanned my ability banks to see if I had acquired any additional charisms, any gifts of the Holy Spirit that I didn't have before. And alas, when I opened my mouth to speak, uh, nothing poured out but that same old Texan. Bummer. I think the sound I heard probably had something to do with a a, a rapid change in barometric pressure, or maybe it was a far-off thunderbolt. I have no idea. But I was reminded of how invigorating and how terrifying this moment must have been for these first disciples gathered together on Pentecost. Let's talk a bit today, friends, about the breath of God. The breath of God. The word Ruah is one of my favorite Hebrew words. It's an onomatopoeic word, which means that it means what it sounds like. It appears throughout the Old Testament, and it gets translated in three different ways. As breath, as wind, and as spirit. With the caveat that for the Hebrew people, there was no differentiation between those three concepts. As they saw it, the breath of God went out into the world like wind to create and to shape and to enliven, and that all of that was precisely the Spirit of God that would later be identified as the third person of the Trinity. So when wind or or breath are spoken of, In this text, and other texts of the New Testament, those understandings are rooted in this Old Testament legacy of Ruah. What exactly is that legacy? What What did the wind, what did the breath of God do in the Old Testament? Well, there are at least two related things, and then a third thing that appears quite different, but might be surprisingly related in the end as well. Okay, the first thing, the first thing the breath of God did was create, and you don't have to get far into the text to discover that. Pastor Russell read us that passage where where the breath of God first appears. It's the first chapter of the first book of what we now call the Holy Bible. Genesis chapter 1, the earth was a formless void, a tohu. We talked about that in Bible study last week. And darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God, a Ruach Elohim, swept over the face of the waters. God sent God's breath out to give substance and shape to all things. And then, that same term, Ruach Elohim, gets used 15 more times in the Old Testament to describe another kind of creation, God's empowerment of people process of creating in people the ability to co-create with God. Eight times the term is used in reference to Saul, the first Israelite king, twice to Bezaliel, the craftsman who built the sacred objects of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and once each to Joseph, Balaam, Azariah, Ezekiel, and Zechariah. And what we see What we see in each one of these cases is that when God breathes into being, God is not just creating. God is creating, yes, but God is creating in a particular way. God is creating in God's image so that the created thing in some way takes on something of the nature and the character of God. That's the legacy of Ruach Elohim, the breath of God. And so, when we get to the New Testament, the reader would recognize that that is exactly what is happening in John chapter 20, the Gospel of John. Jesus has been resurrected. He comes and appears to his disciples in verse 21. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Verse 22, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Friends, I think we we can safely assume that resurrected persons are negative for, for coronavirus, and so that it is perfectly safe for Jesus to breathe, to breathe onto these disciples and say, Receive the Holy Spirit. And through that breath, 
he makes them something more. Something more than what they could have been on, the, on their own. Something more than they were. They are recreated in the image of God and are grown, grown by the Spirit in their ability to represent God to the world and to be co-creators with God of kingdom hope. Creation. The creation of empowerment. Now, I mentioned at the outset that there were three, three sorts of things that, that the breath of God did in Scripture. So what was the third? And the third, again, looks very different from, from this creation and this creative empowerment. There's a great example that appeared in our Bible study on Isaiah 40, right there in verse 7. Hear these words, the grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. Get a few verses further down, verse 24. This is what happens to rulers who think themselves to be godlike in their powers. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. Wow. Yes, the breath of God creates and, and the breath of God destroys. And those seem like two very different things, right? But I think the more that we meditate on those two seemingly different things, the more we will begin to realize that they are not different at all. That in fact, destruction, decay, death, these are integral parts of God's creative life-giving process. We see it in nature, right? It is, it is decomposed biomatter, dead stuff, that makes the absolute best fuel for the creation of new living stuff. We certainly see it in the person, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised into new life, that we too might die to sin and to injustice and to be raised with him into new life. And that brings us back full circle to, to this reading from today, Acts chapter 2 and the day of Pentecost. Just as that wind from God swept over the face of the waters in Genesis chapter 1, it is understood as we read this here in Acts chapter 2 that this sound of a rushing wind is here to create anew in the image of God, in this case to create the church, which will take on something of God's nature, something of God's character that will help it to co-create with God in this world. But the text is pretty clear. This was not a gentle sound like the one that I heard a week ago. It was a violent sound. It was a mighty sound. God was moving in power in a way that would have been awe-inspiring and perhaps a bit terrifying for these disciples. And we would be remiss if we did not recognize in that violent rush of wind a twin message, a twin message to the church in that legacy of Ruach Elohim. You are my people, and I will empower you, and I will support you, and I will love you. And... And, in order to continue to empower you for changing circumstances, I am going to have to continue to change you, which is going to require an ongoing process of breaking down those things in you that hold you back from the fullness of who I created you to be, God says. Friends, breath has been in the news a lot lately. COVID-19 has now robbed over 100,000 people in this country of their breath. Perhaps most cruelly, it uses the breath of infected persons to spread itself. And by now, we are all familiar with the story of George Floyd from Minneapolis and the way in which his breath was stolen from him. You know, we have, we have several first responders in this congregation. I talked to Brent Blackman yesterday 
one of our police officers here in town, and Brent knows, and I hope all of you know, that I have the deepest respect for him and for all first responders who go out to help, to heal, to protect, and to serve. And that is simply not what happened in Minneapolis. And I am appalled, and I am ashamed. Friends, God is building all the time. And we are called to thank God for breathing life into us, for breathing new life into us through the spirit of the living Christ. Yes, yes, even in the midst of the tinderbox that is our world right now, God is breathing, God is building for the future, for our future, for a better future. And at the very same time, the call is also to submit ourselves to that part of God's creative process that involves a tearing down of those things that stand in the way of that future. We have to let some things go. We have to let some things go. Attitudes that elevate me over we. Our tendency to try to shape the world in our image in the days ahead, we may have to let go of some, some ways of doing things that just don't make sense in a post-pandemic world. Oh, we will worship. We will worship. We will praise. We will sing. We will pray. We will take communion together. But we just might have to think differently about how we do some of those things. And maybe God will use those differences to build and bless in surprising and beautiful ways. And friends, if we want to fulfill our mission to share with all people the unconditional love of God that we experience in Jesus Christ our Lord with emphasis on the all, which we put in all caps on our website, all people. If we want to fulfill that mission, we are going to have to let go of those latent tendencies within us to value any one of God's precious children less than any other. Until we can see every child of God, every child of God, the way that God sees every child of God as having infinite worth, we will block the coming of the kingdom. And so, as we pray this week, when you, go, when you go to God in prayer this week, pray for our broken world. But more specifically, start by inviting God to break down in you, in us, those things that divide, those things that hinder, those things that hurt. May we go out and serve as spokespersons for the God-bestowed value of every child of God. And as we do that, may we pay close attention to the life-giving and reshaping breath of God within us. I would remind you in closing today of something that Pastor Amy said to us a few weeks ago, that in addition to ruach, there's another Hebrew word in Scripture related to breath. It consists of the, the consonant clusters Y-H-W-H, sometimes pronounced Jehovah, perhaps more often as Yahweh. It's the closest thing we have to a name for a God who defies any description or name that we could put on God. The name itself is born of the sound of a breath, breathing in, Yah, breathing out, Hue. And so it is that we begin to cry out to our God when we take our very first breath and that we continue to do so until our last breath passes from us. Yah, Hue. With every breath, with every breath, may we praise God who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. Thanks be to God. Amen.
sits like a bird brooding on the waters, hovering on the chaos of the world's first day. She sighs and she sings, mothering creation, waiting to give birth to all the word will say. She wings over earth, resting where she wishes, climbing close at hand or soaking through the skies. She nests in the womb, welcoming each wonder, nourishing potential hid into our eyes. She dances in fire, startling those who see her, waking tongues of ecstasy where dullness reigns. She weans and inspires all whose hearts are open, nor can she be captured, silenced, or restrained. For she is the spirit, one with God in essence, gifted by the Savior in the eternal love. She is the key, opening the scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly dove. Good morning, church. So I was thinking about today's communion and thinking about the breath of God. I kept thinking about Jesus on the night that he was betrayed. And when we think about communion, we think about the elements. We think about the bread and the wine. But I think an element that we've been missing out on this whole time is the divine breath that is in all of us. So as we partake today, I invite you to take a deep breath to recognize God in your life, to recognize the sustaining power of God in your breath, the sustaining power of God in food and in drink, and recognize all of the ways that God continues to sustain us, church. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took a common loaf of bread and he broke it, giving thanks and saying to his disciples, this, this is my body and it's for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Hear the prayers of my family. Let's hold our hands and say our prayer. Close your eyes. Okay, what do you want to say? Dear God, God, dear God, dear God, thank you for playing outside. Yes, thank you for playing outside. And doing everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Jesus. And for playing outside again. And for playing outside again. And, and for family. And for church. And thank you for church. That was very good. What do we say when we're done praying? Amen. Amen. All are welcome at the table of the Lord. We love you, church. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures in
church, the, the guiding question of stewardship is not, should I give $5 or should I stretch myself this week and give $10? That's not what it's all about. The driving question, the guiding question of stewardship is, which of two mindsets, which of two heart sets is growing in me? Is it a mindset focused on building walls around me, accumulating and keeping? Or is it a mind and heart set that revolves around tearing walls down so that the blessings of God might flow through me and go out to God's people for the building of God's world? As you consider that this week, I would encourage you and challenge you to, to give, to give of yourself, of your time, of your energy, of your resources. And if you would like to give financially to this congregation, you can, you can mail a, a check here to the church. Uh, you may also uh, get on our website, fccgranberry.org, and you'll find a give button right there at the upper right in your screen. Thank you, church. Now, before we do anything else, this is the church's birthday. It is also Emma Swindle's birthday. Should we celebrate the church and Emma? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church and Emma. Happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday, Emma. All right, a uh, couple things before we, we close today. Uh, first of all, we talked last week about the fact that uh, Kathy Murray was, was back here in one of these pews and Josh panned over and showed you her face. We got a couple of calls this week asking us why Kathy was allowed to be in the pews and they were not. And, uh, and I want to just make it perfectly clear that that is a picture of Kathy and not Kathy in person sitting back there. Uh, we do love you, Kathy, and thank you also for, uh, for giving us this picture so that we can look out and see your shining face. Friends, this morning, these uh, beautiful flowers back here were given by Candy Stroop in memory of and in honor of Mary Lou Coleman, her mother, uh, the wife of Rogers Coleman, and we continue to miss... Mary Lou, and uh, the blessing that she was in this world. Candy wanted us to be sure to remind you that uh, these flowers are not just for her, in memory of her, but, uh, but in gratitude for all good mothers in this world. And so thank you, Candy, for that gift, and thank you, God, again, for moms. All right, we have uh, at fccgranberry.live. The Disciples Class Bible Study, if you missed that with Pastor Russell, you can go back and watch that anytime. Uh, Sunday School with Pastor Austin is up there as well for our uh, youth. And uh, we will have right at the end of this live stream our Worship and Wonder time for children. Great time to gather them and, and, uh, and worship alongside them. So that'll happen right here. And then following that, at about 12.15, what's going on, Deshae? So... Today is a very special hymn sing that you don't want to miss because it is our last. And with it being our last, we're celebrating a special guest on there. This guest is rooted in scripture and their exegesis just comes out in musical forms. You might as well talk about the fruits of the spirit given the gifts of their voice. Wow. So you don't want to miss this special guest. How much did you pay him to... <laughs> It's going to be a beautiful... <laughs> it's so nerdy, but awesome all at the same time, isn't it? It's going to be a wonderful time. Come back, join us at 12.15, him, him sing with, uh, with Pastor Deshay and a special guest to be, to be named. All right, friends, we are, uh, we are about to transition. Um, we've been doing this this way for, I think, nine or ten weeks, and we are going to continue doing worship kind of like this, uh, but the board, based upon trends in the data that they had been seeing, they voted to go ahead and move into what we're calling phase two, uh, a small group phase in the life of the church. And this is not a call just to rush back to the building, okay? We're not, we're not going to do corporate worship yet here, um, but we have decided that it is acceptable in terms of the risk with, with small groups of people. Uh, together. And, uh, and so we're going to open our building to small groups. 
understanding that at the end of the day, acceptability of risk is up to you to determine. Okay, we will continue to make it possible to connect with us remotely uh, with all the things that we do. But uh, if there is a small group of people, and, and by that we're talking about 10 or less, uh, 15 or less for one of the large spaces in this building, and those spaces must be reserved uh, through the office. There will be a, a link, a form on our webpage, fccgranberry.org, or you can call the office at 817-573-5431. We want to continue to lean into being as safe as we can. If you have any you know, underlying health issues, if you have any concern, stay home. That is okay. That is a good thing. And if you do come together in small groups uh, in this building, we're requiring masks. We'll have masks available at the doors, hand sanitizer. We'll have lots of information uh, for you this week about exactly how to do that and do it as safely as we can. Thank you for bearing with us through this season. Uh, thank you for continuing to worship, to praise with us, to, to build and be church together. God bless you, church. And I think we better praise one more time in the power of Pentecost. And it's funny you should say that because the next hymn we're singing, the hymn tune is entitled Pentecost. time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon a mountain, my Lord spoke. Out of his mouth came fire and smoke. All around me looked so fine. I asked my Lord if all was mine. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River, chilly and cold, chills the body, not the soul. Ain't but one train on this track, runs to heaven and right back. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. I have heartache, I have woe, I have trouble here below. While God leads me, I'll not fear. I am sheltered by God's care. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit Moving in my heart, I will pray. And now, may the saving grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the love of God, our Creator, our Father, the power of the Holy Spirit be with us, abide with us, break us down, and build us anew. Amen. God bless you, church.